Inside Track, the official podcast of World Athletics. Welcome to Inside Track from World Athletics. We are live in Paris 2024. I am Sonia Richard-Ross. And I'm Greg Rutherford. And this is the go-to podcast for all of your info, news, and some pretty big opinions, I think, at times during this Paris Olympic Games. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait. We're going to be here daily. And today we're kicking off the podcast with two incredible guests. We've got World Athletics President and Athletics Icon, Seb Co, as well as 1984 silver medalist turned TV pundit, Steve Cram. We'll be chatting to them about their rivalry, testing some of their knowledge as well. And also, you can get your questions to me and Sanya. Yeah, so for the next 10 days, make sure you're following Inside Track on wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to let us know what you think of the show, all good, I'm assuming, you can leave a review. <laughs> we'll be giving you all the info you need to get involved and get your voice heard on the podcast a little later. Uh, but if you're listening to this podcast or watching it via YouTube, also remember there are full video versions of this show, which is always quite always good to see us hanging about. <laughs> and loads more exclusive athletics content that takes you behind the scenes of the sport via worldathletics.org forward slash inside track all right well listen i am delighted that we are co-hosting this podcast mm -hmm. together because you know there's very few people that i run into that are co-olympic gold medalists from 2012 <laughs> greg so this is super exciting it was a good time wasn't it it like, was a good could, time if we could just go back to 2012 for a couple of days that'd be nice wouldn't you it? know I, you know what i wanted to ask you because you know as an athlete you dream about obviously winning olympic gold but winning it on home saw you one up me like what was no, seriously, what was that like was it crazy uh, i mean like it's once in a lifetime opportunity right the, 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 having Literally. a home olympics and then for it, everything to fall into place and everything to work out and coming out of a gold medal i mean what a time to well for me to be alive and be an athlete i loved every minute of it and obviously for you i guess coming into london as yeah. well after beijing yeah. going out of there and smashing it and maybe I know to the odd the odd rival out there as well. You're sort <laughs> yeah, of like, yeah, 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 I'll get yeah. you on your own turf or whatever else, which which is always a nice thing to do. Yeah. But it's amazing as well. Now we look at how different things are as yeah. well. As much as being involved in the sport as as we are, but both our families now both have very different responsibilities. Yeah. It's not all about rushing to a track yeah. and trying to get your practice in. Very it's true. it's life now, it's which, life which is now. amazing. Yeah, and I think like you said, family puts everything into perspective. Mm. There was one time where it was all track all the time, right? You eat, sleep and breathe this desire to be the best on the track. And now that has changed, right? We wanna be the best parents that we can be and give Absolutely. our kids the best opportunities that we can. And let's talk about life, life and Greg. Unfortunately, <laughs> You're a little bit under the weather today because life got you. What did you eat, my friend? Oh. Why are you, what, what happened? Please tell me where should I not be going while oh. I'm here in Paris? Well, I, I sadly haven't remembered the name of the place. If anybody watching you can see, I'm probably sweating still a little bit. I've been suffering with food poisoning. I know, yeah, fan, oh. fan I, need a, I need a fan person to come in here and just give us a bit of a, but it's, yeah, I've, I've been in a bad way today. I'm not gonna oh. lie. But you can't even tell you have shown up like the true champion that you are for us here on Inside Track, but I'm really sorry. So how long you been under weather? A couple of days? No, literally today so i woke oh. up four o'clock this morning and uh my body was was not having it mm. and i was in a bit of a bad way but i'm feeling a bit better now so we, we've been hanging out having a chat i'm feeling better from that which yeah. is always nice so awesome. hopefully that sets us up for a, a lovely couple of weeks ahead it's going to be amazing you know we are going to kill it here from paris i am excited for all the guests that we will bring in mm. all the insight that we're going to give uh, the audience, I mean, outside of obviously what's going to be happening on the track, there is so much to do and see around the city. So we bring bringing all that, a taste of all that for you here on the podcast. Be sure to be listening and tuning in because Greg and I, we've got you covered. All right, so we are here for Inside Track, and you know, we only bring you guys the very best, and we are kicking this off with a bang, right? We got two incredible guests as our first guest. We have President Seb Ko, of course, the icon on the track, and silver medalist in the 1984 Olympics, Steve Cram, which I just adore you both, and I'm so delighted that you guys are here. It's nice it's, to hear you. It's been 40 years uh, since the LA Olympics, oh, obviously. thanks for reminding us. I mean, I gotta keep you guys honest <laughs> and humble. Um, and, and we're gonna and <laughs> we're gonna get into that, but I want to get into the juicy stuff. You know, like what was the rivalry like between you guys? Was it giving us two? Yes, you got the wrong guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we, 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 we were good. We were always yeah, okay. We were right. But that's a good point, isn't it? I guess it is, it's interesting. There's a rivalry with the, where there was three of you as well, yeah. which in the UK, where where it was sort of it was really built and built on 
TV, everything. Everybody knew that you guys were all battling against each other. I mean, he, I'll let him talk about the other bit. For, for, <laughs> for me, yeah, so so because they're older than me, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> um, a lot older. A lot older. <laughs> Steve, so, so Steve and Seb's rivalry kicked off mm -hmm. and then and I kind of stepped into... Yeah. I wouldn't like to say I stepped into the rivalry. I stepped into you know the, the good stuff that was going on. They were, they were setting the pace for that. Yeah. So for me, it was always a bit, oh, he does this, but he does that. Mm -hmm. You know, and oh, I'm not sure I would do that. I had these, I had, instead of having like, sometimes you have a mentor, somebody who, I had two very different people yeah. and actually quite different athletes as well. Um, so I, I, I had a great time. I mean, when you, when you say like, what was my, I just had a great time because um, <laughs> I could speak to either of them and then sometimes watched. And by the way, if they tell you they were great, if he now tells you they were great friends, <laughs> he's fibbing. There we go. So yes. anyway, anyway, we want, we want the real tea. Give us the real tea. I'll start off from a serious point of view okay. because actually the broader point Steve makes is a really important one in yeah. terms of selection mm -hmm. because you got selected. I, I, I was in Oslo in that watching mm -hmm. you. I was running a different distance, but yep. you were qualifying for Moscow. Yeah, I, I think I, you had I, a runoff against I Graham Williams in the Olympic trials. Yeah, and um, because the two of them weren't uh, went in the fifteen hundred trial, they didn't have to do it. And Dave Moorcroft actually won it, but Dave then decided he'd rather he didn't want to race these two, right. so he decided <laughs> to run the five thousand, and it left it open. So I, I'd gone to Oslo for a runoff. Yeah, with Graham, Graham Williamson. Williamson, but Ovette was trying to break the world record. When you were sitting watching that. I think I might have been at the same of, I might have been at home watching it, but I might have been running a thousand meters yeah, or something to dodge you all. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, he makes a serious point, And yeah. that is in terms of selection. I always say that if you have the opportunity to bring somebody into a team mm. that you think is a real medal contender, mm. two, three, four years down the line, yeah. do it because mm -hmm. being in a village, understanding the difference between a one day meet and a, well, you know, it, you've all done it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a championship is huge. And I always sensed that your learning curve in mm -hmm. Moscow paved the way for, well, I mean, in 82 yeah. is European mm -hmm. and Commonwealth champion, 83 is world champion. And that was the experience I sensed that you picked up in, yeah. in Moscow. And in fact, if Moscow hadn't been your first games, that would have been, I, yeah. I sense that would have been a very different landscape yeah. for you. On the, I'm not saying you wouldn't have won, but you would, you certainly knew it more than you would have done when you went to LA. Yeah, and I, th I think also, you know, when, you, when you're in, a bit like we have again in British Middle Distance Running now, when you're in an environment where just to get on the team, you've got to be darn good. I yeah. mean, you, you have this all the time, <laughs> of course you do, but you know, our strength and depth isn't always there. Mm -hmm. But actually, for, it wasn't just learning from the two of them, you know, from a standpoint of a, of a 19 year old kind of going, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. picking this up. But you also realize what was required. Yeah. You know, and, and actually, and there were people behind me. As I said I had a runoff with another teenager mm -hmm. to get in the team. Mm -hmm. um, and so the strength and depth was there. But it, it, but it was like, okay, that's how high the bar is, you know, kind of thing. That's mm -hmm. what I need. To, I remember coming home from those games. And being challenged by um, Brendan, Bre Brendan Foster's an even older guy who people might know. Um, and Bren... <laughs> I'll pass on yeah. your walk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, we, and he just said to me, so, so when are you going to stop being a promising youngster and win something? Wow. Ooh, That's Bren. That, yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I better get on. But yeah. it, it's, yeah. it's because you're in that environment. But Seb's right. If you, if, uh, we've got a couple of young athletes on the British team here yeah. who, who I hope that experience um, Phoebe Gills running the 800. Yeah, yeah that's who I was thinking of. You kind of go, okay, you'll use that. You know, it, I, I keep saying it's a free hit. It, it's never it's, a free it, hit. You want to do as well as you can. It's very difficult. Yeah. So it's, you just can't articulate it to a young athlete unless they've been there. Yeah, unless they experience it. And that jump, it's like going from county cricket to test cricket. See yeah. anything I can... Yeah. There's probably not the most universal <laughs> analogy yeah. here. Three of us got it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Well, I'll explain. No, I can't explain. I, well, I tried to explain I'm from cricket Jamaica, to an so American. I have a little bit of cricket oh, background. My yeah. dad was a big I, cricket I was fan. Doing, so cool. I was yeah. doing four quite. Four of us get we've it. Got it. We've got it. Sorry. I was doing quite well a few down. years ago explaining cricket to a yeah. great American friend of mine. And they were buying, you know, Brad Hunt. Yes. And he was yes. buying yeah. right up to the moment I said, and there's the potential after five days for a draw. Yeah. How many days? So it's really 
interesting on that point as well. So when we see national government bodies that maybe aren't then putting athletes forward when they have qualified, whatever else, we're talking about the importance of this experience. And off camera, we were talking about the Commonwealth Games. My first mm. Commonwealth Games is yeah. so important to me, as was yours. What's what's you, you guys' views on, on athletes not being effectively allowed to go? It's a tough one because... Uh, you know, given the hat I'm wearing at this moment around world athletics, I don't think it's my role to tell a uh, member federation, you know, what what processes, you know, they choose to, to select athletes. All I would say is that I think good selection is a balance. I think, yeah, you can have, you can go to one spe end of the spectrum, which is the no compromise. And you want your team to be at least in the medal hunt. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think there should be some flexibility to look and make a sensible judgment across your national coaches, even the personal coaches that are working with the athletes, that actually the trajectory they're on probably means they might not even survive the first round mm. of a major championship, but two or three years down the road. That, that experience yes. that they yeah. gain is a crucial asset that exactly. will that if it's not there, is probably going to militate against a medal when it really does matter. Mm -hmm. I, I think the challenge though for federations is, is actually has really come because of the athletes. So what I mean by that is if you start to bring some subjectivity into selection, do not have it in the USA. Right. You know, I think Mo is not here. Yeah. She should be, yeah. should have the world's best athletes here, but mm -hmm. because of your selection policy, which is a cast iron first three past the post mm -hmm. and um, so she falls in the trials and doesn't get selected. Yeah. When you bring subjectivity into it, you then get legal challenges. You get mm -hmm. people saying, well, why, you know, why, yeah. why wasn't I selected over? Yeah. So it, it is a challenge for, for governing bodies. So the selection policies almost have to be watertight now yeah. um, to the point where it's transparent mm -hmm. as to why somebody mm -hmm. is going to be selected. I think what Seb's right, though, where you have the opportunity, let's say, let's say there's nobody else available in a, in a second or third birth in an event. Yeah. And there is a youngster who, who could hugely mm. benefit. Right. But you have to be careful with that as well. I think, you know, not all youngsters are going to benefit from, for some, it, it can be a jump too uh, far. Uh, I really. think there is a secondary challenge. I completely mm -hmm. agree with you on that. I think there's a secondary challenge and it's actually, it's a high class problem because a lot of federations are now being supported by national lottery programs, mm -hmm. but national lottery, the, you know, the direct correlation between medals and national lottery funding for a federation is, is very acute. So you probably, given the structure that they're in, in terms of their funding cycle, you're probably having to put more of an emphasis on taking those athletes that are gonna get the medals or at least the, the, the top five or six finishes. I'm going to switch gears a little bit here, um, you know. Uh, Good, you let me off the <laughs> stuff, yeah. yeah. You let me off the steam a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, your insights were incredible. And I think, you know, all of us have, we've all experienced this. I think we have a lot that we, from our experiences, could add to that conversation. But I am going to let you guys off the hook. Steve, this is for you. I have in my notes here a story about you in 1983 after you won gold in the 1500 meters where you may have forgot something or forgotten someone <laughs> I'm hoping you don't leave any details out here and that you remember the story because yeah, we want to well, hear the whole thing. What happened What happened in 1983? <laughs> well, you know, you don't, the one thing you never plan is, is when you've, after you've crossed the line, do you? You don't plan that. You, you plan, you plan and you think about it and then, and then, and then it, you know, oh, it goes crazy or whatever. And you, you know, I don't know, do somersaults, whatever you want to do. Um, and I went on a lap of honor with a pathetic flag. I remember really, really. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I think that... No, well, what Sunderland then, Football Club, is it? Well, hang on, there's another, there, there, is a, <laughs> there, there is a line there in there as part of the story to some extent. But, you know, now I think they must have looked at that film 1983 and said, Steve Cram just carried the smallest little flag. <laughs> From now on, each federation now has flags <laughs> ready, right? A big flag draped around your shoulders. Anyway, so did that. Um, and then you do, your, you do your interviews down on the track and then you've got... Anyway, I had family and friends there a lot. And I was actually staying in the BBC hotel, which was nearby. And I said, look, meet. I basically said, oh, everyone's very excited. I'll meet you. Um, don't, don't go anywhere. You know, kind of, I'll, I'm going to do what I need to do. And then I'll come and find you all. And um, anyway, so you end up doing interviews, uh, medal ceremony, mm -hmm. all very nice. And then I did, I had a TV documentary crew, which wasn't um, BBC. Who the whole, you, you, So they, I had to meet them separately. 
which is when I did the line about this is nearly as good as Sunderland winning the FA Cup. <laughs> <laughs> People thought it was a bit sad. <laughs> By the way, Sunderland are one of the best football teams, soccer teams in the... Yeah, you yeah, know that? Yeah. Okay, good. In, in about the radius of about five miles. <laughs> about so, um, yeah, anyway, and then, then, I, then, you know, it starts to sink in, doesn't it? You know, and I went for a, a, a proper, a bit of a warm down and it's a beautiful stadium in Helsinki and the warm-up mm -hmm. track, you accessed under a tunnel I don't know if you you'd know mm. that, and um, which is this still there from World War Two, and then you come. Yeah. Is that your a reminder that I wasn't actually at the show? I've just remembered <laughs> now. Yeah, and then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to. I'm just going to see, gonna, gonna see where you're coming from. I'm just going to carry this <laughs> on, yeah. and I'm going to run back to my hotel because it wasn't very far. <clears throat> and um, I get back to the hotel, and I thought it's a bit quiet. <laughs> You know, and then, but but you're reflecting a bit, of course, that, you know, yeah. and you're kind of soaking it in. I go to the room. And then I thought, a, by the way, this is before mobile phones, and everything, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, it was Carry only when I was just coming to the end of my shower that I suddenly remembered, oh my God, <laughs> I told everybody to wait for me in that same spot in the stadium <laughs> until I finished everybody. And of course, you can't ring anybody. No, of course. And um, they, wait, they waited about three hours. In, oh, just, did, did you just, go back? You did actually go back to see them eventually, surely. Okay, do you, I'm well, not going to extend the story on. anymore. <laughs> I did eventually go back, having tried to get messages and all the rest of it. Yeah, the things that we but I think in isn't the it shower. interesting? Though, that, <laughs> yes, I was in the shower. Of all the things you could, yeah. But but isn't it interesting when you get on your own? I yeah. think after after something you know great has happened, you get all those thoughts coming in that do tend to become quite. Oh, you know, you you you. you it it. I, I'm not a particularly um, I don't know emotional person necessarily. Mm. So. Uh, when Sunderland score, I cheer. You know, when <laughs> I was very happy. When, but but when you get those quiet moments, it kind of that's when it all comes out a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I just was having this moment. Well, why isn't everybody sharing this with me? You know? <laughs> Where are they at? Where's my fan club? This is horrible. What, what if they have gone off without me? You know, <laughs> I just have the idea of a janitor having to turn the lights back on. Yeah, yeah exactly. just, just, about, <laughs> just still sitting there waiting. It was pretty much like that. Tiny it flag. was pretty much like that. Yeah. Sam, do you have a similar story? Did you forget anything big when you? No, well, I, I, after eight, in, in 84, I went to, there was a, used to be a, a, a rotating restaurant in LA. I don't think it's there now, but I remember putting my medal down behind me and sitting with my parents having a meal after the 1500. And, it? and I looked round and it had gone. And there was this, sort of, <laughs> this crazy comedic vision of me crawling around, <laughs> going to, from table to table on this revolving restaurant going, have you seen a medal <laughs> around here? And I, oh, I, I was would think like, a way to see that. <laughs> no, the only thing that I was smiling at is talking about post races now. Uh, and you did touch on on Steve, and I'm not I'm not going down that road, but I do remember how funny it was at the end of the fifteen in Moscow because it was you know I had assumed that when I got past Steve in the finishing yeah, straight yeah. that mm -hmm. he was going to finish second. I mean, it was a tough race. <laughs> yeah. I got to the end of the track and I sort of turned around and shook his hand. I said, well, okay, gold and silver, you know, silver and gold. And he looked, looked to me and, and I think he thought I was taking the piss. Yeah. As he said, actually, I've got the bronze. No, I, oh, I'm no, sorry. No. I thought, you know, I didn't pray. <laughs> and then he was understandably as a callow youth yeah. a few meters behind mm -hmm. he couldn't see through the traffic so he went up to see <laughs> and oh, congratulated him on winning well it's another another lesson if you so, want if you want to know who won the race don't be last <laughs> right. you know, so, so, so between he, you were on the you were he was yeah. prostrate on, on yeah. the track so you know, and I was, I was i was kind of oh well, never mind said you know <laughs> and all that had his arm up I think waving to Rachel, his yeah. wife, in the so crowd. So between right? me thinking he'd won, and <laughs> between got me thinking he'd got the yeah. silver, him thinking he'd he won. won. I've then oh. come and gone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was always a challenging relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have gifted us with the best stories ever. Yeah. All right, you want to shift to something else, one? Yeah, I think. What about? Um, because it's going to be a really interesting one here as well. Sort of changes in equipment. And again, we're completely shifting yeah. it again. What we're seeing, I saw earlier on, they're saying about the track being two percent faster than Tokyo. So Who, wait, 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 wait. Who yeah. is the scientist well, that, that came up with that that's prediction? Two percent Two percent is a Probably. lot. That's a lot. That's what that was what the stat that I saw early on today. So well, it'll be the it'll be the supply mondo, I guess. Yeah, they're, I'm sure the mondo folks came up with that number. <laughs> well I can say that. They are our world athletic supplies too. <laughs> so I read it so I don't know whether it's getting confused then because because Paula Radcliffe, who mm -hmm. Paula loves this stuff. 
So we were sitting at dinner the other night and she goes, yeah, you know, if you go around the track the other way, it's 2% slower. If you go I the went, other well, way? Well, yeah, because it's like, she goes, no, 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 it's because of the way the track is. I went, what? So then we started into a whole, you oh. know, she goes, oh, well, I've read this. So it's something to do with, I know, see, you're looking up. <laughs> you, that's, <laughs> I, that's exactly the look I had on my face when Paula was telling me this. Yeah. Look, let, this is what I love about technology and sport. Actually, I did an innovation conference about two or three weeks ago, and it was I was really surprised how many non, Showing you know, people kind how of to use a mobile non-athletics <laughs> people. No. This was like business and things, but people were asking me about the new long jump rule yeah, or yeah, your yes. shoes, and mm-hmm. you'd be surprised how people like technology. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, the idea is that somehow, so you have concrete at the bottom. Of the shoes? No. <laughs> no, of the, the, the track. I love it for sushi. And then the, the, it's the next bit that they're laying that, that apparently is, I don't know. It's like cutting your grass in one direction rather than oh, the other direction. I don't think I've ever done that, Steve. Well, yeah. Don't I know. think you've ever cut your own grass. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Except people to do that I've for. Yeah, people do that. I've only ever lived in doing it. Okay. But if that's your business, to be yeah. fair, because we come back to the business thing, if that's your business, <laughs> you know, your whole thing about innovation in business is about customer experience and results. Right? Yeah. It's about it's mm-hmm. got to be better. So of course, and I'm not saying it's not, but you know, you if that's your business to try yeah, to, yeah. we're trying to make it better. Yeah, make yeah, it better. And we found out that if we did this and yeah. that, you know, so yeah, I, I, look, anything that makes people I, I, go quicker. I hope it is two percent quicker. Me Absolutely, one hundred percent. What are we saying? You know, yeah. we're, we're we've all been athletes. Yeah. We've wanted to be better this time next Absolutely. year than yeah. we are now. We Absolutely. wanted to be better in LA than we were in mm-hmm. in Moscow. Uh, so uh, it, it's interesting, isn't it? It's I a mean, I think there the pool is a balance, though. Yes, the pool here is slower. Your pool people. here is lower? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's the depth. It's the depth, depth of the pool. Because it's a temporary I'll take your stadium. Word for that. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't swim. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something you do when you're drowning. Yes, that's right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. It's just one of those necessary things you have to learn to do when you're a kid. And you go, okay, I yeah, can do it. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't learn as a kid, no. But. No, you, learn, okay. you still don't know how to swim? No, I, I learned to swim a few years ago. Okay. Yeah, oh, I was going to say, we're kicking off the pod if you can't swim. now. Everybody here can swim, huh? I'm really, I would really struggle. Oh, oh, oh. I see some armbands on. I don't do right? water. I never did do... steeplechase. Did you ever do steeplechase? <laughs> I did one and th- well, I was 15 and went, ah. Not so much. Never awesome. again. All right, cool. Well, we were talking about the equipment because when we were downstairs, we saw that you guys' gear and equipment from 40 years is in this building. But 40 years. 40 years ago. So we're thinking there's been much improvement since then, but I'll, I'll move on. We're going to do something fun now. I hope you guys are ready. Oh, yeah, man. go. I hope yeah. you guys are ready. We are going to be asking you guys to dum 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 predict the podium. Oh, okay. Oh, we we, we didn't prep, practice that before, so I didn't know. No. That yeah, you didn't join now in. Now you know. I know for the, next, for the next, next episode, I'll, I'll join yeah. in. I'll join in. I hope I'm more successful than last time. I know. We, we did struggled this in a Glasgow. bit. In, yeah, we struggled a bit in Glasgow, <laughs> but we you're gonna I have I have confidence because I picked events that I think you're gonna be just spot on for. Oh, really? Yeah, we're gonna be doing the women's hundred and the men's fifty. Where do you guys want to start? Where do you guys feel more prepared in the moment? I think. Okay, so I'll go. Let's do women's hundred. Okay, okay. So I was asked a question last I'm night. Really pleased did, you did that. See, when, <laughs> when's this going out? Is this going out after? It's gonna go. Yes, and here's the thing. I wanted to do this before oh. we saw any of them run, right? Because oh, after man. you see a bit of their form, will they, will they see what it's I different. say? Yes, of course. Oh. The whole world's gonna see. We have millions okay, of people yeah. tuning into Inside Track. We'll this is sure, the spot mm, to be. Okay. We zoom in on anything controversial. We're really gonna hide. <laughs> All right. What we what we were having a discussion around is, is surprises. Mm-hmm. Like, where would you see a big a yeah. big surprise? Okay. And it's quite hard these days to yeah. to see big surprises. Mm-hmm. So I said the women's hundred. Okay. Because we've got a big hot favorite. We have a big hot favorite. So Shakari Richardson yep. is a red hot favorite. Mm-hmm. I really like what Julian Anfred has been doing all I season. I love her yeah. too. I think she's been having a great season. Mm-hmm. Her new coaching setups really helping. Trains with Dina now. Dina trains with her. Yeah. Um, World Indoor Champion in Glasgow. Did you predict that? No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't predict much in that. Look, she, uh, Richardson is still the favourite. Yes. But, but. So yeah. um, we've got no Sharika Jackson. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so do you have to do the whole podium? Yeah, yes, give there, me top three. three. Yes, you're saying, so are you saying, are you saying uh, Shakari? You're saying Julian? Or are, yeah, you, are you flipping those, them? Or are you... Mm, 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 you can be bold. This, mm, we like bold predictions Okay, let's... Here. Uh, I'll go... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's go bold. Let's go bold. Let's flip it. And You're say, gonna, okay. Let's just see Lucia are going to win their yeah. first gold medal. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, obviously. She, that, and third, you want to pick third. Yes. Okay, I think it could be interesting. So let's go. Let's go. An outsider. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, let's go another minute. Let's go with Tia Clayton. Tia Clayton? Oh, Jamaican. From Jamaica. I like that. I like that pick. Tia like Clayton I like that is, pick. again, what mm-hmm. she won 1086 in the yeah. Jamaican trials. I yes. Think. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good podium. That's a good podium. Yeah. So and, we have and, Alfred and Richardson and, and Clayton. Shelly, because she was behind Sherry Gill, yeah. but Sherry is now not doing it. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Seb, I'm, go, I'm sticking with Shikari. Okay. I'm not sure, Silver, but I will throw <clears throat> a wild card in here. Okay. Because I think she is improving, and I just really like her as well. But I think Talu yeah, has a medal it's chance. It's time for Talu to get it on the podium. Time. It is time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to go with Talu on the podium. You're not giving us a silver medal? you got to give us silver. I think I'd if, if she's on the podium, it's uh-huh. probably bronze. Yes. And I would go Shakari and Alfred. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Are we doing ours as well? Of course. The people want well, to Well, I'm actually really happy with this because I basically, because I have mine written here on the phone. Yeah, and I have my paper I, somewhere. I, I basically have the same. So I went with Shikari, mm-hmm. um, then Alfred. And then I just thought, just because it's a lovely story as well with, with Shelly Ann just to come in and yeah. mm-hmm. final one, sort of doing it for us old athletes. Yeah. I, and just sort of getting out there and, and, and doing she does it. know That's, enough. That's the well, other difference. Yeah, that experience, experience is a great thing. She knows I, enough. I also, I'd, I'd love to think we can get, from a very personal British point of view, two Brits in the final as well, I just think would be, mm-hmm. yeah. I think because things open enough, the women's yeah. challenge is 100% open enough for two yeah. Brits in the final as well with mm-hmm. Dina and Daryl maybe, so that's my hope. I yeah. love it. I, I think Daryl over Dina. Yeah. yeah. Go. That's yeah, a good ride. Right. Talk about rivalries. That's a good <coughs> rivalry. That's a good Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Shakari, uh, Julian, and I'm going to go, I was torn between Shelly Ann Fraser Price and Melissa Jefferson of mm-hmm. the United States. I think Melissa is going to sneak on there for that third mm. place spot. So I'm going to, since no one else mentioned her, I'm going to put her on the bronze spot. Perfect. So that's none our of podium us be, for the None 100. of us will be right, but yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> All right. Who's writing this down, by the way? Oh, we got, oh, uh, that's what all these right. cameras that's are what, here for. We, out, yeah. Yeah, we got it on record. See how analog I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but who has the pen and paper? All right. Um, men's 1500. I want to start with you, Seb. I feel like, I feel like we should... And Switch again, rivalries, right? I mean, like this is this, this is, is the rivalry, really, of of the whole game. I li- well, can we just quickly just take a moment here because the men's fifteen hundred has become so exciting to watch, largely in part of this rivalry, right? It's like yeah. the first time that we've seen middle distance distance runners like have the same swag of like hundred meter runners, mm. and I love it. Mm. So I am like I'm very vested in this one. Very so, much so I want to hear your picks. Yeah, and I like it because yeah. it's probably not for the most Corinthian views but i actually quite like the, the slight irritation between these two yes times. i mean <laughs> this is not a friendship and is it really slight this is, is not yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so. I, i'm trying to be polite here but this is not a friendship made in heaven no, no. it really isn't and i mean they do viscerally dislike each yeah. other yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know that's that's it's probably great. being good yeah. um i don't quite know where to start here because this will, in large part, I still believe, be in how Inga Britson approaches yeah, is. this final. Yeah. I mean, assuming he gets through to the final, yeah. I think we have to assume he does. Uh, Josh Kerr, and I think Steve probably, I hope, would agree with me, Josh Kerr is just in that purple patch in his career yeah. where he is walking out into a stadium, he's expecting to win, mm-hmm. and probably for the opposition, worse than that, they're expecting to be sort of chasing silver and bronze. Yeah. I think he's got an unbelievable belief in his ability to win this. Yeah. I think if Jakob sort of falls into a no man's land in the race, which he sort of did in the last two world championships, then I think Josh, uh, Josh is a very much improved athlete. So mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think he's going to be sitting there worrying about whether Inga Britson takes him into the killing zone from mm-hmm. sort of 326 minus. Yeah. I think he's prepared for that. Yeah. But he is faster at the end of the race. There's no question about that. So, oh, You got to pick. Okay, Josh Kerr okay. Yes. over Inga Britson. Mm-hmm. And third place is just, I think Wide it's open. almost impossible to predict. Yeah. I'll give you a little moment to think about it, but you got to give right. me a break. I'll come up with third. A, yes. Go ahead, okay, Steve, go. you go. Okay, uh, yeah, I agree Don't with a lot. Don't you think third's difficult? Uh, I do, but I, I third, third is difficult, pick. yeah. But um, everything you said is absolutely correct. And I'll, I'll play a little bit devil's advocate yeah, please. And, and end up agreeing with you. But um, <laughs> <laughs> If I wanted all that, I'd be at home. Uh, 
<laughs> Josh, Josh has been good for Jacob because, mm-hmm. um, and by the way, it, 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 you know, Jacob would pick a fight with 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 these taxi drivers. You know, so, I mean, so, so don't don't like you. Know, but, yeah. but Josh is, I think the two of them have gone. Hey, you know, this is okay, and mm-hmm. this is good for the sport. Yeah, um, and you know, so good. Um, I, you want to be in Josh's shoes. You know what you know what your rival's going to do. When you know what your rival's going to do, mm-hmm. you can plan for it. Exactly what Seb said. You can train for it. You can plan for it. You can go, yeah. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. And you don't even have to think too hard. You're just going to have to work hard. He has, you know, Inge Britson has, he's, he's probably got no more and, and, you know, two very similar options to run. Right from the start, hard, or from somewhere not long after the start, right. hard. Um <laughs> And you really can't see any other options for him. So that then makes it a lot easier for the other guys, Josh in particular. Having said that, and there's great shape that Josh is in, there are lots of other good athletes in this field who yeah, are now yeah. have got the confidence from what Jake Whiteman did and from what Josh yep. Kerr did to go, yeah. you know what? I'm not just going to let these two have it their own way. Right. They're gonna go and if so, Josh will have to, he kind of just line up behind. Jacob, because he's going to have a couple of other people going, yeah. well, hang on, I'll take that place, so I'll move it. And of course, if you lose half a yard, a meter at the wrong time, mm-hmm. you've got to go around somebody. So he's going to have to be on his toes, um, and we're going to see a great last 800 meters, I'm sure, with 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 lots of people challenging. You you would have to say- World given, record? Oh, possibility. Um, you know, I, so we have to reverse this a little bit. The semifinals, actually, I've got a question for you, because there's a bit of debate about this. We've got new rules. No, so no fastest losers. So we're going to have hard semifinals. Yeah. yeah. Okay? So hard, ra- hard race and then come back and do the final. That will impact yeah, the time. On, on, on the final. So yeah. it might not be quite as fast as we might think yeah, if it true. was a one-off. So I think I'm going to go, I'm still going to go with Josh, but I, th- I think it'll be tough. Mm. Um, and um, Ingebrigtsen, and I'm going to throw Laros in there. Oh. The youngster from Netherlands who, okay. I've, you know, to, to fall in London get up and still run as fast as he did for the mile. Yeah. That's, a, that's a world record for falling down and getting up and, and running it. Um, uh, again, I think other people are going to be challenging and, you know, Chariot's back to, almost back to his best and the Goose yeah, and, and, and other guys. Too. You know, there's lots of people going to be in the, in the mix there, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw him in. Mm-hmm. Me? Yeah, going after you. So I was um, going to be on the Josh Kerr train for the gold, but I kind of feel like I want to switch it up because mm. you guys both have picked him. I actually like him for the win, but I all, there is something about Britson that I think it's hard to bet against. And I think having not won this event at the World Championships, it's going to make him <laughs> even hungrier. And I think that, I mean, no one can beat him when it comes to confidence. So I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to go with Britson for the gold, even though I had written down Josh Kerr. I'm going to go with Britson. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Kerr for the silver, even though I love, I just love him. I think he's, I just love watching him compete. It's going to be a great race. And I'm going to go with Yard and Goose for the bronze. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go into Goose well for, for bronze. That was sort of the other person. I was just yeah. sort of looking and thinking, it's a solid bet. Yeah. Um, I'm going, I'm back on the Josh, Josh Kerr track. <laughs> and the thing is as well, what I found really interesting is watching other people now talk about him when they watch him train, when they're watching things. There's a documentary came out about him recently. Yeah, he's great. And they're all sort of saying, the because conf- you're talking about confidence levels, mm-hmm. the confidence levels that, that Josh is showing, that's actually getting to the point where some of the, the British public is irking them a little bit because mm-hmm. they're going, oh, he's just too confident because we seem to hate that in the UK. No, I think that's, 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 spurt, that's his, 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 at the moment, he's in the great shape of his life and his yeah. only Achilles heel is if he comes into this a little bit too, I know what I've got to do and I'm going to do it. Yeah, you, you have to respect yeah. what oh, Inga Britson's going to do and to be fair, what the other guys are capable of. Yeah. Um, so... And I think as long as he does that, mm-hmm. then then yeah, we're we're up for a great race. Yeah, it's going to be very good. So Jakob second, mm-hmm. just to clarify. So I'm interested. If you're Inga Britson, yeah, what are you at this moment working on in training to counter the distinct improvement in pretty much every facet of Josh Kerr's fifteen hundred? What are you What are you doing to deal with that? It's really difficult because I've I've thought about this and I've I've had a, a, a couple of sort of conversations with him over the last year or so because he had injury in the winter yeah. and and you know he was he was yeah he actually wasn't at his best last year as well and um, I saw him in Eugene and I you couldn't I've never ever seen somebody like him be as happy yeah to get beat in the no he got beat and Josh was brilliant and he broke somebody's British record I seem mm. to remember but he um. 
you know, Inge Britson was, he performed much better than I thought he, he thought. So he's at a higher level. So he's, he's, he's come on from that. He was brilliant in Monaco, but he's still, like you say, Seb, the only thing he's been able to work on is to be better than he's been before. Mm. And, and that's the only way he's going to run away from, from the guys is, is to be better than he's been before. So yeah. that's a question. Mm -hmm. Can he do that? Can he do it? He's got to make it hurt early on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I think. Yeah. You got to push the pace, go for it and make it hurt. All right. Well, we're just, we have one last uh, question for you guys. This has been so fun and I've learned so much, but we're going to put you on the spot. We want one outrageous selection, like over the 10 days, is there something that you think is going to happen? Somebody that's going to like, you know, like a sleeper pick or something that you think will be outrageous. And we're probably going to zoom in on this and say like, this is a big, it's a big deal now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold you it's going to be slow-mo zoom. Yeah, in, exactly. Like, the whole lot. Wow. Light will come out. It's really hard. I mentioned that a few minutes ago. You know, the, yeah. finding surprises now yeah. is difficult. We've got so many great athletes around at the moment, you know, at the top of their game. Um, you can't really see too many of them faltering. So I'll, I'll be, shall I be, shall I be a little bit, just for a surprise, not a win, um, go right to the end of next, almost the end. Um, I'm, oh, I shouldn't say this, I'm going to put pressure on him. Because he really hasn't got a chance. I think the marathons are going to be really interesting. We've got mm. in the men's marathon, we've got some of the greatest names in the men's and the women's. The, the women are at the top of their game. Yeah. The men, Elliot Kipchoge, Ken Nisa Bikeli, you know, you've got you've got two of the greatest names ever in our yeah. sport racing. Um, Emil Keres of Great Britain in the marathon. Mm. In mm. a in a in a in a race which I don't think it's have, have any of you been on the hill? It's the yeah. toughest marathon oh, course of all time. My oh, word, wow. yeah. Oh, my God. So that's going to be, mm -hmm. that could shake the marathon up in a way. This oh, yeah. is not no for the faint heart. Yeah. Yeah. You've so never, there's no marathon course at championship yeah. level that's like ever this. been as tough as I this. I mean, the idea of a long jumper doing a marathon is a joke anyway, really. So, I mean, like any form of marathon would be pretty <laughs> horrific. You could, jump, you could almost jump your... off the top of the hill. You know, it, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it's not even just the uphill, but when you get to 30k, it comes down really steeply. And for marathon runners, that really hurts. Yeah, that's hard, yeah. But yes, I just said, just... Yeah. Yeah. What one. if somebody like that won a medal in the marathon? That'd be great. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go for Ecuador winning the men's 20K race walk. Oh, they did that this morning. <laughs> I was just going to say... <laughs> I was, I was just going to say, shall I correct him or not? Shall I correct him or not? When, is, it, when is this going out? Yeah, that was a good yeah. one. Uh, and maybe China for the women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's, that's incredible. incredible. It's a no. great question. I don't, I, uh, I mean, how I did you get it? You, I mean, it's like you just look into a glass ball. Yeah. Yeah. Impressive, that is. Very no impressive. No wonder. No Women's wonder pole vault. Okay. I am probably being a bit British here. I think Molly could win this. I really do. She likes big championships. There's going to be a big British crowd yeah. in that stadium. Of course. And the, yeah. probably the second biggest crowd to yeah. uh, the French. The home. Yeah. The home talent yeah. Mm -hmm. uh yeah molly in the pole all right well we want to thank you guys so much for joining us this was the way to kick off our inside track here from paris 2024 it's gonna be a lot of great stuff on the track all around paris but you got to come check us out every day we're going to be bringing you guys great insight from great guests thank you guys so much Thanks, for joining thank us. you thank you, thank you. Yeah. all right greg i don't know what you think but i think that was a very strong first episode Brilliant. We had two great guests and a great conversation. But now we're going to be stepping into the unknown because it's time for Ask Me. Come on, now. Keep, you got to pick up on this, this now. Come on. I, I, I was just enamored by like, well, I was like, this is just poetry in motion. Are you I've ready? Got okay, okay, okay. Now it's time for Ask, Ask Me Anything. anything. Yes. I even sort of put a slight American accent on that there. You did, I, I Ask did. Me. <laughs> We're going to have a great time here. This is only day one, and I'm telling you, the vibes are right. Okay, so this is your opportunity as fans and guests of our show, because you're, you're all guests out there listening, to ask us anything. It could be about what's happening on the track or off the track. And so it's time. How are you feeling about this, Greg? Yeah, it's good. It's a chance for everybody to put us on the spot. Yeah. You can get in contact via our social media via uh, World Athletics. You can search that. Yeah. Slide in the DMs. Slide this is the one time this we're is the asking. the only time my <laughs> husband will not be checking because we know it's going to be good questions. <laughs> when in Paris, you can slide in with athletics-based questions. I will stipulate that. <laughs> All right, so do you have something? Let's check and see, because we posted about an hour ago. Yes. So look and see if you got a good one. I'm checking mine now, too. Okay, right, this could be dangerous. Let me check the first one. Okay. Um, okay. 
Here we are on the phone, right? George says, uh, what were you doing your spare time in Paris between your media work? Well, do you have any time between your media work? It's so I busy. Know, I know, yeah. You know, so when I, I've been here for three, four, three days prior to actually starting to get working. And I think most people can guess what I've been doing. <laughs> I've been at the shops, baby. I have been <laughs> down um, the Champs de Lucey. I've seen Louis Vuitton. Oh my gosh, have you seen that like box that Louis Vuitton box? I haven't seen it yet. No, I've been to see it. What are you doing? I've well, got, I mean, got ill. Yeah, yeah, you did get ill. So I'm gonna give you a pass, but I've been doing what all the girls do in Paris, baby. I have been <laughs> shopping, I've been down eating. It's just been phenomenal. How about you? Did you have any moments to do anything yet or? No, not yet, as I say. Well, I mean, I went for a wander last night. I left the hotel and this mm -hmm. is where I picked up the illness. So. <laughs> Yeah, that was less than ideal. Um, <laughs> so the plan is feel better, feel go better. out and, and experience some of the, the sights and, and sounds. And I competed a few times at the Paris Diamond League, yeah. but I never got out to go and see anything. That's so the I thing, go Greg, that I think that I want to make sure I take advantage of is because when we were athletes, I was always so intense and so locked in. I never went and saw cities, but my family's actually coming up on nice. the second, my husband and my two boys. So I, we may even go to Disneyland. I mean, they probably go <gasps> well, without me, but I want to book them up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? They're going to, so we're going to really explore and have fun. Can't beat Disneyland. All as right, well. you ready for the next one? Let's go. All right, so this one is from Chloe. Okay. And she says, if we could swap a career, our careers with anyone else, who would it be? Oh, that's, that's, a, a, good, good that's a good question. Any other athlete are we saying? Or any other sport? Or what was it? I mean, I, mean, any I think career? we can use our imagination. We can get creative here. Oh, I mean, could we go for anything? Though, could we? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I always sort of said, if like things went a bit wrong for me, I'd just become an ice pilot in Alaska. Excuse me, so what? Say it again. <laughs> it's a bit left field for you. <laughs> Very left field. I don't have a pilot's license though, so there's the <laughs> odd stumbling block on the way to that. But there we are. I'm going to change anything. Oh, <laughs> right. we get a little well, bit left field here, right? That was a <laughs> major. We're talking about outrageous stuff. Yes, yeah, it's a little outrageous. Um, if I could switch careers with anyone, I mean, there are a couple of people I would, and I'm not going to go the sports route either. Okay. I'm going to go with Queen B. I'm trying to be Beyonce because I'm trying to see the world from her lens. Okay, baby, this lady is dominating everything that she does. It's like, how do you, how are you Queen B? Like, what is it like being Queen B? You know that what I mean? That would be so special. That, that, yeah, she could, she could get the Olympic gold in the 400 and I'll take everything else. If, if we sort of get struck by lightning and this happens, yeah. if you need a lift in a plane across Alaska, I'm your man. We did it. I we mean, got it. That's how we're going to be getting the job done here, too. So thank you guys so much for joining episode one. We are having a blast here in Paris. We hope you're enjoying listening wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching us. And we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.